Offer tea? Yeah, all the time. Every time. Why? It's an advantage. Yes, you do, yeah. Always. Always, yeah. For me, I'd probably tea it, so just in line with the with the ground. So depending on the condition of the tea, yeah. I'll probably just, just slight tea just so it's just above the, the ground. But you'd never not tea it, would you, with an iron? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, generally I'll put a tee in the ground. Right, so before we get hitting golf balls, either in the driving range or out there on the golf course, and I will be doing both in this video. Um, first of all, this is what I would call a copycat video. It was uh, my mate Liam from Golf Mates. He rang me a few weeks back after caddying on the European Tour, and he said that he's seen the pros doing something that, that surprised him, and that was how high they teed up the ball when using an iron off the tee. And the first thing was that sent alarm bells ringing because I don't use a tee at all. I'll just literally drop a ball and hit it from the turf. So that's the first question in my mind is that why do they use a tee? They obviously know their onions better than I do and there must be a benefit of doing so. There's some obvious things that spring to mind, but I'm gonna look at data and see if it tells us what that benefit is, why I'm missing out, why the pros are doing what they're doing, but I'll also take it on the course and see what impact it has when I'm playing. But first of all, I want input from you. Do you use a tee or not? So comments down below, tee or no tee, and then let's have a look on whether we're doing it right or doing it wrong. Time to hit some golf balls. Whenever I do testing, I always like to back up whatever I find out on the golf course in terms of my own personal opinion. I like to see it backed up in terms of data. Am I actually seeing out there on the course what is happening in reality? Uh, and that's what data gives us. But there's a slight caveat, I think, in terms of this test that we've got to bear in mind. I think it's when I'm hitting from the mat. So without the tee, hitting from a mat, it's an artificial surface. I ain't gonna take a divot from it. I'm never really gonna get one fat. That club head always sort of slides along. So I think in this instance, while we'll use the data to see certain aspects of the results, I think it will be interesting to see how my opinion is formed when I actually try this test out there on the golf course. But for now, let's get some data and at least, let's see what the science says in terms of what happens to my contact, my ball flight, the end result when I use a tee or not. Did all the tests in that uh, four golf as I would normally do. Uh, you've seen a little explanation there as to slight um, concern over the data in terms of the mat, not quite the same as being outside, and we'll get to that shortly. And I'd normally save the dry ball data till the end, but we're gonna do that now, and then we're gonna see what happened out there on the golf course. So dry ball data up in front of you now, starting off with the uh, eight iron. And what you see with eight iron, if I'm being perfectly honest, is very little difference whatsoever. Almost identical across the board, and I've said this before on reviews, is the differences and variables that are in there are more likely to do with my swing than uh, the, the consistent performance that's required. And, and honestly, very little difference whatsoever visibly in the range as well. Then it's off into the uh, five iron, and we now start to see a difference. And I seen the difference visibly before I looked at data. I could tell from hitting from the tee, the ball seemed to be launching that bit higher. And as you can see from the number in front of you now, or the comparison numbers, it did launch higher. It carried that little bit longer. The overall numbers, the descent angle, as well as the interesting one for me, where you start to see some differences appear. So whilst I didn't see nothing in the eight iron, the five iron, you were starting to see advantages possibly from using a tee. But does that ring true when we're out on the golf course? Because at the end of the day, that's reality. That's where we play golf, not on a driving range, not on an artificial surface, back out on the golf course. What 
you see on the course is there's a you know, winter tee, slightly uneven lie, so the ball is going to sit at a, 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 a consistent height. It certainly presents itself well at address. All in one on camera would be nice. Get it. Oh, it's a bit long. It's a bit long right of the flag, but no interaction with turf whatsoever. And uh, yeah, that was nice. Let's try it without the tee peg. So now, naturally, what I would do uh, if I was on this tee is drop a ball down, get myself a little bit of a tuft. Yeah, that'll do. And I'm good to go. slightly better line off to the right that one there is ball and turf interaction I'm not sure how much it affected the flight T or not to T that is the question and um, I think there's a couple of things that I would want to mention um, we've already seen what happened in terms of dry ball data and I've got to say that I was aware that was the first part of the test second was to come out on the course always give you my honest assessments as to what I see and in all honesty no major difference um, the last two four irons I hit which is where I've just finished on that last tee was the case in point um, again when we watch them back or you're watching them back now there may be a difference in ball fight but I didn't see it they were virtually identical I think the logical thing is when you're teeing up a four iron um, to have that little bit of that ball above ground that little bit of a clean surface it's logical that that would be the thing that you'd look to do it makes sense to me um, but I suppose for me it's become a habit I drop the ball find a little tuft of grass and a hit from it almost and again you know our, us golfers were a little bit weird it almost changed the way I wanted to swing the club and I know that sounds stupid but um, I found myself wanting to just compact that ball a little bit more when it was sat on the turf than I did a more sort of sweeping action if you like when it was put up on a tee and again that's probably just down to my mentality and years of being lazy and not putting the tee peg in the ground I think the overall assessment is this is um, I think the suggestion is that probably looking at dry ball data if we spread that over a wider number of shots the ball flight is probably different logically it would be yes you can perhaps get a cleaner strike I think it depends how you hit on the ball as well I do tend to clip the ball off the top I don't really take much of a divot so it hasn't impacted on me personally that great um, but it might do to others so I think uh, it's all down to personal preferences after it all I think the logic that for me I'll probably just carry on teeing it up as I do which is off the deck what I'm used to and um, yeah I've, I've not learned anything that would suggest that I need to do otherwise but as I said earlier on the video more interested in this is comments down below how many of you actually tee the ball up and how many of you stick it straight off the deck and um, is there anything you've seen in this video that I persuade you to do otherwise Anyway, thanks as ever for watching. It's an end of what is a very windy day at Conway Golf Club and uh, it's time to get back inside and uh, I'll see you all soon.